Today I've got seven tips and tricks for new players in Call of Dragons to help give you edge and accelerate your progression through the early game. So if you're looking to get that early edge, then stick around in this video for seven things that I think will really help you out. Hello my friends and welcome back, I'm Chiskool Gaming, and I aspire to make a series of guides that are going to help you get serious value in Call of Dragons. And if that's the sort of thing you're interested in, consider subscribing to the channel for more Call of Dragons videos. Let's kick things off with the very first tip, which is that you should be increasing your VIP as one of your number one priorities. This does a lot for you. And if you go over to the bazaar, you can see the center shield icon over here. I'm going to click that. From here, you can increase your VIP level. Now, I'm currently VIP 9 on this 100% free to play account, although I'm going to be spending a ton on my main account and progress way past this very, very quickly. However, there are several very important things that you get from VIP, and this is all tip number one, baby. First of all, you're going to be getting a bunch of passive benefits that includes, for example, building speed and production speed of resources, gathering speed, research speed, and training speed. That alone makes it worth dumping gems into your VIP for a long-term investment into your account. But there is more. At VIP level eight, you unlock a second research queue. You heard me correctly. For those of you used to playing Rise of Kingdoms where you can only research one thing at a time, guess what, baby? Get to VIP eight and you can research two things at a time. This is honestly kind of insane, and the thing I like the most about this is that you can have a long-running research going in the background if you wanted that takes a really long time. For example, if I go deep into the military tech over here, some of this stuff takes a while, in fact. Some of it I haven't unlocked yet, but this is just only going to level six, and it's going to take me 10 days of research just about. Well, you could have something like that running and then speed up through some other stuff as well or some smaller research running at the same time. I love this. You want to get this as fast as you can because obviously every day that you have an extra research queue is kind of like a day of free speed ups. But this is not the only benefit you get from VIP. We're still on tip number one, which is that you should set the hero you get from your VIP daily gift. That's right. You get to choose what hero you want from among the heroes you have. You get tokens of that hero. If I just scroll backwards here, VIP 7 is where you're still getting an epic hero, but VIP level 8 and above is where you start to get legendary heroes. So you can see why I was saying VIP 8, get there as fast as you can. Not only do you start getting legendary hero tokens every single day, not only do you get percentage-based buffs, and you also get the second research queue, which brings me to tip number two, which is that you should also unlock the second building queue. Now, at the time of this recording on this account, I actually don't have the resources to progress multiple buildings and research and other things at the same time. But if you had a farm account running, which you absolutely should, and I'll make a dedicated video about that, don't you worry, you want to have your two building queues running 24-7, and another thing you can do to get that second building queue, besides paying for it with dollars, is buying it with gems. So the only thing I would consider maybe a higher priority than actually going and upping your VIP would be to get that second building queue and to unlock that sucker with gems. This brings us to tip number three, which is that if you're exploring the map, and we zoom way out here, you have just got a ton of exploring to do at the start of a season. But I have good news for you. You don't have to manually click your way through and explore every single zone to completion. In fact, there are items, and I can see it on my map right over here. It's an observatory. Let me zoom all the way in on this bad boy. Here it is. When you go to the observatory, you can activate it. And not only will that do a little bit of exploration for you, However, once you complete 90% of the exploration of a zone, you will also get more exploration for free. So you can see it just explored the little bit of area around the observatory. Um, but if I zoom back into the observatory here, you can see that once I get to 90%, it will explore for me. In fact, I think I will have to take it to some video footage I recorded of me exploring like this in order to show you this effect. But the big takeaway from 
the observatories and how they work is that you shouldn't explore every nook and cranny in the zone. You should send your scouts to the area where you're going to unlock a lot of unknown area. So for example, as I click around the map here, I could click somewhere where I'm going to explore 90%. Uh, if that is unknown area, that's a good use of time for my scout. So I could run my scout there and get 90% as opposed to exploring some of these corners. Um, that one's actually 88%. That's not so bad. Uh, but you'll take less time to over, you know, overall explore the zone. If you stick to the main areas, get to the 90%, then top it off with your observatory in the end. From here, we're going to zoom back in and go to the city and talk about exchanging stuff. You actually can go, in, in this case, because I'm Wilderberg, it's the Goblin Market, but you can go to your market, and there is an exchange. Now, in the exchange, you can turn in things you don't need and convert that into stuff you actually want. So, for example, because I have maxed out Chakcha and also Ordo and Kella, I can actually scrap all of their tokens if I wanted to. I can hit Max, Scrap, Confirm. That is giving me currency. There are three different currencies. There's a hero currency, an artifact currency, and a premium item currency. You can then use that to go purchase stuff you actually needed. So, for example, if I wanted to get some metals, well, hey, I just turned blue tokens into legendary metals. And if that ain't sweet, man, I don't know what is. Now, remember, there are those three currencies, so they correspond with each other. The up top hero scraps give you hero exchange coins that you use over here. Um, the second item is the artifact exchange coins, which you only get from artifacts. And the premium items, you only can get these premium items down below. But you should definitely make some of those exchanges as you start to max stuff out, because you're going to get some serious value from this shop. This brings us to tip number five, and I actually should have rearranged these because we're back on the topic of exploring and technology. And if we make my way to the research center, some of the very first technology that you have, I believe it's all the way through architecture, logging techniques, and gold mining, and possibly some of the military technology as well, you can get just from scouting the map. It might just be the economic technology, but... When you run around the map and you click through all of the zillions of notifications and things you're going to be getting that you explore, you will have the option um, as you go to uncover some technology, which will definitely uh, save you some resources, save you some speed ups. So just keep that in mind that at the start of the game, it actually does make sense to do a lot of exploring because that will give you technology. If I make my way to my mail, you actually can see this. I've discovered supplies and have camps. Uh, there's a lot of things I can go check out that are going to give me some rewards. And, you know, for now, it's giving me some basic stuff. But once you actually go to one of these, you can just click the go button and it'll take you to the next and the next and the next and the next. It will take a shocking amount of time to click your way through all this stuff. Uh, but there is a lot of incremental gain you can get from actually doing this. Do you have to? No. But one of those things you'll get is some technology. So consider for that early tech making your way through some of the exploration to go obtain it. This brings us to tip number six. And man, we're still on the map here. But weirdly enough, if you go to gather, you can gain experience, which is really wild. Your heroes will level up. And there are actually talent points that make it so that you gain more experience. If you make your way over here, you can see talents, Earth's grace in the foundation talents, when a legion finishes gathering resources, the hero receives experience equal to the amount of resources gathered um, and maximum of, you know, some amount of experience per day. And not only that, um, but also on the gathering specific heroes, if we go to the gathering talents themselves, there is more of this. I'm sure I can find it over here. Um, here's one, Earth's Grace. There's, uh, there's uh, some more experience you can get there. I think they cap out at like 20,000 experience. Here's another one, five points. I think you can get to 20,000 experience. So you can choose talents that will give you more experience and you can uh, run around with multiple commanders, you know, use a secondary to gain experience. And that's pretty freaking sweet. So use that, gain experience. Let's go to tip number seven. And tip number seven is a way to recover your troops. You're going to have so many menus and damn things to look at when you're new to the game. It's honestly hard to take it all in, but 
once you get comfortable, you'll look to your alliance and you'll actually go to the store. And one of the things that you'll ultimately get from battling is merits. Now, merits you can get as it says in the upper right here, from battles. Merits are used to purchase items in the merits store. There's no limit to the amount of merits that can be gained. Your merits will not be reset upon leaving your current alliance. So merits are really important because you can get these items over here. These are medical supplies. Um, and these medical supplies let you instantly heal troops. That may not seem like a big deal now, but you'll have to take my word for it that it will be a big deal later. And remember, these reset each week. Some people will actually make farms that they fight, which I find to be a rather confusing prospect, the way that these merits work, but you fight your own farm and then literally farm up not only resources for your main, but then also farm up <laughs> merits on your main, and then you can convert those merits into healing for stuff that you really care about. One thing you can consider, but definitely check out your Alliance store, which you can see I have actually over 2 million uh, of this alliance currency, which is a little bit insane, um, that, you know, I could convert into some value. It's like some teleports over here is pretty nice. Speed ups if I wanted. And unlike in Rise of Kingdoms, where the store needs to be stocked and then there isn't actually enough currency to play KVK because you can't build forts if you actually stock your store. In this game, there's just a store and you can buy whatever you want and it's individual. So don't worry about depriving someone else of stuff by buying it from here. You're not. Go in, spend your merits, spend your alliance currency, GG easy. There's of course so much more stuff to learn in Call of Dragons. If you want to know some of the biggest mistakes you could make in the game, um, in the end screen I'll have a video for you giving you more information. As a reminder, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this one, giving you tips and tricks for Call of Dragons. And if you're looking for a video where I just start out playing the game, this is before I'll be making my main account, but like, six months ago when I started playing the beta, all of in the card in the end screen for that as well.